The Cuyahoga County Prosecutor's Office in Ohio has just released documents laying out interviews and evidence collected in the Sheriff's Department investigation into the shooting death of Tamir Rice. Rice was the Cleveland 12-year-old who had a BB gun who was waving in a park. This happened back on November 22nd of last year. A 911 caller reported that someone was waving a gun at people. They added that the gun was probably fake, but that message was not relayed from the dispatcher onto the police that responded to the scene. A short time later, a rookie police officer seen on this video pulled up in a patrol car and shot Rice several times within seconds. Earlier this week, a municipal court judge said prosecutors should move forward with charges against the officers. The prosecutor said if there are any charges, it will all be up to a grand jury. That grand jury has not yet been convened. Let's talk about it with former NYPD detective Harry Houck. Mark Lamont Hill is with us, a professor at Morehouse College, also a CNN commentator, and also joining me is criminal defense attorney Philip Holloway. He joins us in Atlanta. He is also a former police instructor. Gentlemen, thank you for being here. Philip, let me begin with you. Sure. Can you help us understand this Ohio law that allows a judge to say, to look at evidence and say, yes, there is probable cause to charge here? I mean, one of the officers, he's saying there's probable cause to charge them with murder, involuntary manslaughter, reckless homicide, negligent homicide. Why can a judge say that, but it actually has no impact unless the prosecutor convenes this grand jury? Well, it's because there's a conflict in the law in Ohio. A lot of states, Georgia included, have these citizen warrants where a civilian can go to a judge and ask for a judge to issue an arrest warrant. However, in Ohio, the judge's determination is not binding upon the DA, and, and no warrant can be issued unless the DA seeks one. Uh, this case is going to a grand jury, and you know, the judge who, who ruled that yesterday did not have the benefit of this uh, doc these documents yes. that were released today that uh, give a lot of very significant information that, in my opinion, uh, would support the shooting as being a legitimate one. Hmm. What is some of that information that you think uh, that you think that you think bodes uh, for the uh, in favor of the officers responding in this way? There is one key Supreme Court case called Graham versus Connor. It's from 1989, and what it tells us: the United States Supreme Court says that uh, in use of force cases, they are to be analyzed. Uh, as objectively reasonable as seen from the perspective of the officer on the scene without necessarily the benefit of 2020 hindsight like we have now. There are documents, uh, excuse me, there's information in these documents that, that tell us that the officers were not told by the dispatchers that the gun was possibly fake or that he was possibly a juvenile. In addition, these documents say things like um, video surveillance confirms that as the officers rolled up on the scene, uh, uh, Mr. Rice, uh, the young man was reaching towards his waistband uh, on the right side uh, as if, you know, to pull out a gun potentially. And so when you have a dynamic and fluid and ever-changing situation and officers with limited, if not incorrect, knowledge having been given to them, that is the perspective that must be used, not 2020 hindsight. Mark. It has been 200 plus days and a grand jury has not yet been called. And that is what I keep hearing over and over from so many people saying, why has this not been brought to a grand jury yet? Why does the family have to wait so long? What, what is your reaction to that? I agree with the family and I agree with the people, not just in the area, but really around the country and indeed the world who are saying we need some level of justice. What does justice look like? Justice means a thorough investigation. Justice means a grand jury. Justice means getting to the bottom of this. Uh, there are. Uh, I, I, read, I read the report. The, the report is very helpful. Uh, it still doesn't. It still doesn't answer certain questions for me. For example, uh, if you legitimately think that this child uh, is such a threat, why do you pull up and get out of the car? There's no backup. You jump out urgent. You jump out quickly uh, to someone holding or potentially waving a gun. It, their, their behavior didn't seem consistent to me with someone who thought they were in imminent danger. Yet their response was, in terms of shooting him, within the, the report said between no more than two seconds, no more than two seconds after getting out of the car. Uh, it, it's troublesome to me, and it warrants an investigation. I'm not saying let's do kangaroo court here. I'm not saying let's not give these officers a fair shake. I'm mm -hmm. saying let's subject them to the scrutiny that any other citizen would get. Harry, I think has. that's an interesting point, Harry. Uh, you are a former New York City <clears throat> police officer. Does Mark have a point? Why would you get out of the car if you feel like you're in imminent danger with no backup? 
because you're a police officer and that's your job. You get a call that there's possibly somebody there with a gun, all right? Tactically, that officer who was driving the vehicle came up too close, endangering the life of his own partner, but that's not criminal, okay? That's not criminal. So when that officer got out of that car and saw that kid make a move through that gun, the only thing that officer had to do was fire that gun. He couldn't sit and wait to see if he fired first and if it was a toy or it was a real gun. That officer would have been dead, okay? So that officer, and, and, and I read this whole report, well, too. He wouldn't have been. And I believe, I believe that this, this, uh, this report here vindicates the officer completely. If I can jump in for a second, too, sure. to, to follow up on Harry's point. You know, the officer did take cover. He fired two shots and immediately took cover. That is objective evidence that suggests that he felt that his life was legitimately in danger. And but he so didn't even he, know if he shot, he shot the guy. That's why he took he cover. He wasn't sure. He, 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 he fired two rounds, which is typical police training, and then he took mm -hmm. cover and reassessed the situation. And contrary to what some of the reports were, there's information in these documents that suggest that the officers were very anxious to get medical care for Tamir Rice very, very quickly. They even went so far as to tell the uh, ambulance drivers to go ahead and step it up. You need That's to get correct. here more quickly. So that shows that there, there's no conscious indifference for human life. There's no malice. And other officers who rolled up on the scene saw the, the fake gun, and it was not until hours later that even these veteran officers realized that it was fake. They all thought it was a real gun. And, and Poppy, Poppy, let's remember also, uh, the, the, there the wasn't a call. A call Very didn't come through. I want to let Mark get in here. All right, listen, the call didn't come through. It was a fake gun. The call came through that it might be a fake gun or it might be a real gun. The caller did not know. So all I'm doing is hearing that the call came through that it was, it was a fake gun. All right, even if the call did come through, it was a fake gun. How does that know if it was real or fake in the first place? So that officer can't wait for the first shot to come at him. Right. And that officer our, acted our final, completely proper. Final, so, final word to Mark. Just a quick correction. The, the call didn't say that it might be a fake gun. The call said that it was probably a fake gun. Uh, those were the exact words for the document. But there he couldn't tell if it was, was, what, was or in, not, Mark. In terms of what? I, 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 I listened to it. Of, I, I, I listened to it as well. I'm, I'm just, I was just correcting the point you made. But, but back to the bigger point here. I, 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 don't, I don't, again, I don't believe that the officer's intent was to go out there and, and hunt down a 14-year-old child. I don't think that's the intent of many officers. So the fact that he gave him medical attention to me isn't necessarily exculpatory. I mean, even the crazy guy in, in Charleston uh, who planted evidence call, called an ambulance right away, I don't think that makes the case for him or against him. I don't think that's necessarily particularly relevant. I think the question is, what, was the, what, what judgment did the officer use in that moment, and would he have made a different judgment were it a different child or were it a different person under those circumstances? To me, those are questions that a grand no jury should answer that. again. I'm not saying throw the, throw, I'm not no, saying throw them in jail. I'm saying let's let's have a grand jury. Yeah, I think a lot of people. Well, we're going to have a grand jury. Why, well, a it's lot of people happen. are asking why the grand jury hasn't been called yet. Why it has been 200 plus. Right, that's my point. And, and, takes, uh, and just to be clear time, here, guys, Poppy. I got to wrap it up. To be clear okay. here, Martin Savage on the ground there in Cleveland reporting for us, Harry, that it doesn't look like a grand jury is going to be called anytime soon. So we'll we'll be watching and following it as well. Harry, Mark, Philip, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank more you. ahead on that.